Here comes the dreamer, Simeon said in disgust. Reuben squinted into the glare of the midday sun as it reflected off the rocky landscape. In the distance, a figure approached with a brightly colored cloak of red, blue, and gold flapping in the breeze. It was the patriarchal coat that, according to custom, signified the authority of the firstborn son. As the oldest of twelve brothers, it should have been 42-year-old Reuben's coat. Instead, it graced the frame of the awkward teenage boy who was the eleventh in line, the favorite son of a favorite wife. Once again, Reuben was reminded of the harsh truth that he had faced every day for the past 17 years. His father loved Joseph best. Reuben surveyed his brothers as each of them trained cold, angry eyes on the boy in the distance. Jacob's favoritism of Joseph had always been difficult to take, and lately Joseph had done nothing to help the situation. First, he gave their father an unfavorable report concerning his brother's care of the sheep. Then he informed the entire family that he had two dreams in which his brothers and even his father would one day bow down to him. Reuben knew it was only a matter of time until long-simmering resentments finally boiled over. Reuben was stirred out of his reverie by the motion of Levi's approach, with one hand grasping the hilt of his sword so tightly his knuckles were white. When he spoke, his voice was low and calculated. Let's kill him, Levi said, his nostrils flaring. He then jabbed his sword in the direction of a nearby cistern where a three-foot wide opening led to a dark man-made cavern, 15 feet deep. We can throw him in one of these cisterns and say an animal got him. Then we will see what happens to his dreams. The brothers all laughed in agreement. For a moment, Reuben imagined what it would be like to be finally free of Joseph. Perhaps then his father Jacob would allow him the rightful honor as eldest son. But at what cost? And what would become of Jacob if he lost his precious son Joseph? No, said Reuben. Just throw him into the cistern. Don't hurt him. One by one, the brothers, burly warriors, stood to their feet. Joseph kicked a stone ahead of him, stirring up a small swirl of dust on the dry ground. He heard the bleeding of the sheep and looked up to see his brothers gathered together as they awaited his arrival. He smiled, raised a hand in greeting, and then slowly lowered it again as he saw their clenched jaws, hard eyes, and bald fists. Joseph's heart beat faster. He took a few more slow steps and stopped. Then, in a hopeless attempt to save himself, he turned to run away. But he was too slow, too late. Strong arms wrapped around his waist as rough hands gripped his ankles and wrists and ripped his coat from his back. He twisted and kicked in terror, but he was no match for his powerful brothers. A moment later, he fell down, down, down through the darkness and crashed onto the stone floor below. After a moment, Joseph struggled to his feet. His eyes were wide with terror and his face was flushed in pain. Bright sunlight and harsh laughter fell through the opening far above him. Let me out, he cried. Let me out, please. Please don't leave me down here. Please don't leave me. Joseph drew a ragged breath and wiped his eyes with the back of his hand. Tenderly, he touched his face just above his left eye, and when he brought his fingers away, they were covered in blood. He paced the floor of the cistern, his eyes never leaving the opening above. Then he sobbed in despair, sat down on the floor, and rested his back against the wall. He pulled his knees to his chest, wrapped his arms around them, and lay his forehead on the tops of his knees. Far above, he could hear his older brothers laughing and joking as they passed around water skins and loaves of bread for their noonday meal. Joseph had always been in awe of them. Some of his earliest memories were of him toddling after them when they were teenagers. As a boy, he had begged them to take him along when they went out with the sheep. As an adolescent, he had watched carefully as they polished their swords and packed their bags in preparation to drive the sheep to greener pastures. But any time he drew near to his brothers, rough hands shoved him away. In recent months, they could no longer even speak decently to him. Joseph's brothers hated him. Bloodied and bruised, he finally realized just how deep that hatred ran. Suddenly, the jovial sound of his brother's camaraderie was interrupted by the unmistakable sounds of a caravan. The clip-clop of donkey hooves mingled with the rough voices of the traders as they called to one another. The hard clink of slave shackles was punctuated by the crack of a whip and the deep groans of camels laden with heavy bundles of spices. Brothers, said Judah, what are we going to get out of killing our brother and concealing the evidence? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites, but let's not kill him. He is, after all, our brother, our own flesh and blood. A murmur of assent reached Joseph. A moment later, a long rope dropped down into the cistern. 
Joseph's heartbeat pounded in his ears as he stood to his feet and reached for the rope. Then, with trembling hands, he grasped it. The moment he shoved his foot into the loop at the bottom, it grew taut, and he began his ascent out of the cistern. As soon as he reached the top, his brothers seized him and shoved him to the ground in front of one of the traders. Joseph struggled to his feet and stood trembling as the traders circled him, inspecting him carefully. The trader cast a critical stare at the gash above Joseph's eye before grasping him by the chin, prying open his mouth and inspecting his teeth. Then he stepped back, nodded in satisfaction, reached into his money pouch and pulled out a handful of coins. Joseph watched in horror as the man counted 26 pieces of silver into Judah's palm. The moment the last coin fell, heavy iron shackles fell around Joseph's neck and around his wrists. He looked down in disbelief as one of the traders secured his chains to the camel in front of him. Then the trader called out to his companions, the camel lurched forward, and Joseph took his first steps toward Egypt. Joseph cast one last glance over his shoulders as his brothers faded into the life he was forever leaving behind. Judah, still a stone, stared back at him while his other brothers laughed and tossed a loose ball back and forth. Suddenly, a breeze caused the object and unfurled a garment of red, blue, and gold. Judah had saved Joseph's life, but it was a cruel deliverance. The favored son had become a slave.